Hey everybody, how's it going? So today I'd like to continue contributing to this business talk and advice playlist. I haven't contributed to this much in the past five or six years, and I've made uh, a lot of mistakes in business and in life over the past five or six years. One thing I've noticed about myself is the longer that I'm alive, the longer that I'm breathing, and the longer that I'm trying to do anything, the longer, the more that I screw things up. Uh, that, that tends to be par for the course for me. And what I'd like to do is I'd like to share some of the things that I've learned from these screw-ups. So that is, you try to grow your own repair business, you don't make a lot of the same mistakes that I did. And today what I'd like to discuss is growing your repair business via retail work or wholesale work. Doing work business to business where you're dealing with other repair shops where you're expected to give a steep discount versus dealing directly with the end consumer. So I advocate greatly that when you're building your reputation for your repair business, you focus on retail, not business to business. Uh, there's typically two ways that, that you're going you're to deal with this. Either A, random people walking in off the street or calling you or mailing you stuff to fix, or B, another repair shop coming in that doesn't fix things and asking you who actually fixes things if you could do repairs for them. And if you are able to do anything of any sort of that requires skill, anything other than an iPhone screen repair, at some point you will have other repair shops come into you and ask you to be able to do the harder things for them. So one example, and admittedly this is kind of going to date and age me a little bit here, Let's say we're talking about the old days with the A1369 and A1466 MacBook Air when the entire screen assembly was all you could replace and it was 450 bucks. And then one day, the LCD cells by themselves came out, just the LCD, just the screen, not all the back housing and everything, and it was 72 bucks. A lot of people were still replacing this entire thing because they did not know how to take all this off and just replace this without screwing it up. So what they would do is they would go over to a repair shop and they would say, hey, I see that you offer this service to your customer for $250. Um, can you do that for me, but like for 100 bucks because I'm a business? And what really surprises me is that instead of telling them to fuck off, many people will actually say, okay, sure, I'll do it for you for cheaper because you're a business. You know, and, and it, I had this receptionist named Veneera. She was very, very smart, and she also called me out on all the stupid shit that I did. And I remember when I, I remember looking at her at one point saying, well, they're a business. They need to make a profit to their customer, which is why it has to be cheaper. And she looks at me and is like, sounds like a personal problem. She always, that was her favorite saying, sounds like a personal problem. She had this accent from being from Kazakhstan, and it kind of added this sharpness to, the, to when she was telling me that I was being an idiot. That was very, very important and very, very well needed. And it does indeed sound like a personal problem. Why am I lowering my rate by $150 so that they can profit? That doesn't, when they're not even doing the work, it doesn't make any sense. And it was something that we would do with board repairs and all different other types of repairs. And it did, when we started to get busier and busier and busier, it was just like, why are we doing this? Now, many people believe that you need to make the, the work cheaper if you're dealing with another business for a couple of reasons. A, they need to make a profit. Sounds like a personal problem. B, they're going to be less of a pain in the ass. Not true. Uh, if you tell a customer, hey, uh, I know you called asking for a status update. Uh, you're not allowed to do that. It's done when it's done. And if you don't accept that GTFO, they are going to be very mad at you. They're going to call you unprofessional. They're going to speak to you the exact same way that a retail customer would speak to you. Wholesale customers are not more understanding on average than retail customers. They will call you as much. They will often be as untrusting. They will ask as many stupid questions. They will bother you in the same way that a retail customer will. But there's this idea that I'm dealing with a prestigious business. I don't need to have a customer service person anymore because I'm dealing with another business and they are going to treat me in a business manner. So therefore, I can charge them. No, you, you can't charge them less. It's not the, because that doesn't make any sense. Uh, the third is exposure. I hate this word. I worked in the music business in New York City in the mid-2000s. I hate that word, that idea that, oh, yeah, I know we're only offering you 30 bucks for a band of five and maybe free beer if you come to Pianos or Arlene's Grocery and play for five hours, but you should do it because you're going to get exposure. There may be an A&R executive in the audience. They're there that night. They're going to figure out who you are, and a lot of people may even figure out what your MySpace page is. Horrible shit. The idea that you need to because you're new and the only way that you're going to get new business is by doing work for cheap so that you can get people to know who you are. Let's say that I don't disagree with the concept of working cheaply for exposure. Let's throw away all the arguments again. Let's just assume it's true that doing cheap work to get exposure will grow your business. Let's just put on the table just for a moment that that's okay. How does that make sense when you're dealing with business to business work? 
Okay, let's take the exposure model and take it to retail. With retail work, if I do a thousand discounted repairs, I did a thousand discounted repairs, but 1,000 new people now know who I am and can tell every single one of their friends how awesome I am. That's 1,000 chances to get a five-star review on Google, Yelp, or Facebook so that I build my reputation and I have a brand that is trustworthy where I can look and see this 200 or 300 five-star reviews. Wow, I can trust that place. That'll lead to more business. And that is 1,000 potential customers that may need business into the future. And that, 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 so I've essentially built my customer base at that point. Let's go over how that works if you're helping some local shitty franchise that doesn't know how to replace a trackpad cable or something. You do that job 1,000 times at a discount. Only one business knows who you are. They're not going to tell anybody how amazing you are because they don't know how to do any of their own repair work. If everybody were to go to you, instead of going to them, they would lose out on business. It's usually not a zero-sum game in this industry, but if you don't know how to actually fix anything, it is a zero-sum game. Everybody that goes to the real repair shop is business loss to the fake repair shop. And C, they're never going to review you on a social media platform. They're not going to go to Facebook. Somebody who runs a CPR or you break guy fix is not going to go to Facebook and say, Ross and Repair is so amazing. They do amazing repairs. Go here. Like that, that's, just, that's not the way any of this works. Retail customers do that. So, and, and they're not going to tell anybody who you are because it cuts against their business model. Further, what happens if they decide to start insourcing instead of outsourcing? What if you make them so much money from your discounted hard work that they can actually afford to hire somebody competent that knows how to do their job rather than somebody for seven bucks an hour that has no skills off Facebook Marketplace that's probably not even legal or old enough to work yet? Oh, there's not even going to get into the franchises I know that do that. But what are you going to do? They were your customer. Most of your work came from the, these types of customers. So now you open yourself up to a point where not only do you have no reputation, not only do you have way less reviews, not only do way less people know who you are, but one customer leaving you, that could be 20 or 30 or 50% of your business, and they could just take that all at one time. If that customer says, we're fixing boards in-house today, you just lost 20 or 40% of your business, just like that. And if you don't have the Google of the Yelp reviews because you were fo you, all the work that you were doing was for the repair shops that are never going to review you or tell their friends about you versus customers who do review you and tell your friends about you, you got to start from scratch now. You got to start from scratch building up a reputation so that you can start getting more work. It's, in my opinion, very dangerous in the beginning to really, really dig in and focus on business to business work because A, you're not building your reputation, you're building somebody else's. At B, you risk losing a large chunks of business when they start aside to become real repair shops and actually start fixing things themselves. It drives me nuts when I see that somebody is doing an audio IC on an iPhone 7 for like 30 bucks or something, and almost every time it's not for a retail consumer, they wouldn't charge a retail consumer that. They charge a repair shop that, so that that repair shop can then charge a higher price to the consumer. They're not getting a reputation. They're, do, they're also devaluing the entire business by making it acceptable that that type of difficult job be done for 30 or $35. It's this indentured servitude mindset that to me, it, it, it doesn't make any sense. If you want to offer a deal to a customer because you like them, fine. But this whole idea of, well, that other business needs to be able to make a profit. I agree they need to be able to make a profit. And I think that they should put the time in and learn how to do what the fuck you know how to do so that they can do that themselves. Um, I wasted a, a lot of time uh, doing wholesale work for rates that I shouldn't have been doing it for. And uh, I, I realized a few things happened. A, when they started doing the work themselves, large chunks of business just got sucked away. Uh, B, the time that I put into their repairs, I could have put into my own marketing strategy. I could have put that into posting, a cross posting to New, uh, Craigslist and Backpage and Kijiji and OLX and classifiedads.com and all these others. I could have spent that time doing more actual outreach. As I said, you know, 12 or 13 years ago, I actually went to a store, got a polo shirt, very similar to this one, but it was a kind of a light blue. I walked into an Apple store and I just kind of looked for people that looked a little bit irate. And almost every single one of them that looked a little bit irate, I would say, hey, how's it going? Uh, you know, what are you here for? They were, they were there for the Genius Bar or they were waiting for somebody to come back from the Genius Bar or they, were, uh, they, were, they didn't know that they needed a Genius Bar appointment and they were told that and they were pissed and they were just looking around before they went home. And I would just talk to them for a little bit. You know, hey, what's up? How's it going? Oh, yeah. oh, okay, so this is what's wrong with your machine. Yeah, so the, you're probably going to hear this. Uh, this is what's actually going to be wrong. This is what they're going to tell you is wrong. 
By the way, here's my card. I don't actually work here. I'm just wearing a blue shirt. Uh, and again, I, I, it's, it was a really, really, really weird and awkward thing for me to do. One of many things. And I'll be honest, this, this wasn't the, the straw that broke the camel's back with regards to a lot of people knowing who I am. It was just one of many weird things I tried to do at the time to get people to figure out that I exist. And, uh, and what I found is that as weird and as Asperger's-y that I can come off in person to people that I don't know, some people were just so hungry for competence to just be able to get their stuff back and not spend $1,000 that they didn't even mind. And, you know, get, whatever it is that you're going to do, Spend your time building your brand, building your business, not building somebody else's. It's the same thing with Amazon and eBay. The reason that I would suggest that people create their own online stores rather than go to eBay and, and Amazon because that's the way to get quick, easy sales, build your business, build your brand. When somebody goes to eBay or Amazon to buy something, 99% of the time, they don't remember who the seller was. They don't care. You're building somebody else's brand. They're not going back there looking for Mark Schaefer of iPad Rehab or Tim Herman of TCRS Circuit. They're going back to eBay or Amazon, and they're clicking whatever's at the top of the most reviews. They're not going back to you. It doesn't matter if you sell 15,000 things on Amazon. You could start your own site tomorrow, and many people won't have a clue who you are. I want you to build your brand. I want you to build your reputation. And I want it to be something that sticks by for the long term, where if, one, again, if eBay kicks you, and you're a business that relies on online marketplaces like eBay and Amazon, you may have just lost 50% of your business in one day. Just like that, you offend the wrong person, you do the wrong thing, you uh, disobey one policy, and you're gone. With wholesale, again, one customer decides to just start doing things in-house. You're gone. I suggest that if you're a small repair business, a small repair shop, focus on the retail. And if you're going to focus on wholesale, if you're going to focus on wholesale at the expense of retail, make sure that it's being done in a manner that is sustainable. Meaning, A, these are people that are going to stay with you through thick and thin. B, you're making enough money off of that client that it makes sense for you to work with them versus working with some of your retail business. Or if you're kind of if you're taking that wholesale business and you're working it into your retail business, make sure that it is something that is actually worth your time. Don't give it a 50% or a 70% or an 80% discount on labor simply because, quote, they're a business. Make sure the arrangement makes sense for you. And the moment it stops making sense for you, the moment you realize, huh? I have a limited number of technicians, a limited amount of work I could take in, and these people are willing to pay 50% over what these people want to pay. Don't be ashamed or embarrassed to say, listen, we can't do wholesale anymore. We can't do wholesale rights. I'm sorry. Feel free to find somebody else. The thing is, there's always going to be the cheap person. There's always going to be somebody out there that's willing to do audio IC on an iPhone 7 for 30 bucks. That's always going to exist. You can't change that. But what you can do is you can compete on reputation, you can compete on, uh, on your skill set. You can compete on, on the things that actually matter. That's what I would say. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. I know I'm going to get a lot of people to disagree with me who think that wholesale is the way to go, business to business is the way to go. Uh, again, this is one of the, the misconceptions that I had early on, and it, it was one of these, it's just one of these like rules. It was kind of, it's similar to the rule that I broke in 2015, which is if you're in this particular industry, you, quote, have to do iPhone screen repair. That was another rule that I broke when there was a screen shortage in 2015 so that I could focus on board repair. Um, I was very scared when I made the decision I was doing the wrong thing. One of the very few things I did right. And uh, getting rid of all the wholesale clients that I had that wanted me to do board repair in the double digits and all that. Listen, again, if you want to do that for your customers, fine. Um, but, like, work, but killing yourself so that somebody else can have a good reputation... I just, I don't recommend it. And it was something that I should have never been doing. I do less of. I'm upfront with people when they say, hey, we want to establish a business to business relationship with you. You know, there's 99% of the people out there are going to be cheaper than me because I'm not really going to care that you are a quote wholesale customer. I don't really care that you quote have to make money on top of what we charge. Uh, this, this is the right list. I have, it's not because I want to rip you off. It's I have a bunch of other work to do. And that were, and I just I don't see a value to me to, to lower it just for you. There are a bunch of other people that'll be cheaper. Feel free to go there, but I'm not doing that. And, and it made sense. It made sense. It allowed us to kind of reorient ourselves and realize, wait a second, I, I don't need to hire a bunch more people and then worry about whether or not it's profitable and all that stuff. I was just able to have the best technicians that I have work and do the work for people that are going to appreciate it and also when, also when I started doing this, I noticed that the reviews, it kind of started to do this, 
I had to do less repairs in order to get more good reviews, more good comments online and everything else because the people I was doing the work for were actually willing to tell other people about it. Remember what I said in the last video, everything that you're doing should serve multiple purposes. If you are doing a repair and then you film it, you're not just doing one thing, you're doing two things. You're providing educational materials. If you upload it and it's in a friendly manner, now it's doing three things. It's a repair for the customer that you make money on, advertising to the consumer, which will bring in future business, and it is now teaching the next group of people that will become employees of your business so that rather than having to sit next to them and train them the whole way, you have educational materials. When you are doing work for another business, you're losing out on that work being able to do multiple things for you. It's not going to generate new reviews. It is not going to generate new word of mouth to other businesses, at least in our particular industry. So the repair that you do, it's really only good for that quick money of that one repair. And if you're doing it at such a steep discount, like 35 bucks for an iPhone 7 audio IC, honestly, it's not even making you much money. So it really doesn't make sense. Uh, when you do that repair for an end customer and you do a good job and you're nice in how you deal with them, word of mouth, five-star review, loyalty to customer, and loyal customer, and also, again, you actually get to make some money. Something to think about. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. If you run a business that's way more successful than mine, and you believe that I'm on some complete bullshit here, by all means post. Uh, I am... I am going off of anecdotal experience here. I'm not saying this is some sort of objective proof. This is purely my opinion. And I am open to hearing from people who are way more successful than me, who make way more money than me in the repair business that may have a differing view. But this is my view. I, 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 I feel like a, something in the pit of my stomach when I read that somebody's doing like audio IC for, you know, 35 bucks or they're doing, you know, LCD only screen repair for like 20 or $30 in profit on a MacBook Pro where they're risking breaking a $500 display assembly and taking up an hour of their time. It's just like, again, if you're going to do this for, if you at, least, at the very least do it for a customer who's going to appreciate it and share it with the world, not someone who's not. Let me know what you think and I will see you all later.